Welcome back everybody to another reaction video and while we wait for the voting to take place over on Patreon for what our next uh, reaction series will be and as I'm continuing to work on some editing on a couple of videos uh, on historic content uh, from sites that I visited including the battlefield at Yorktown and the gravesite of President McKinley while we're waiting on those things uh, I wanted to dive into one of my favorite stories from World War II. Many of you are familiar with it because of the film uh, that was made about uh, the story of Desmond Doss called Hacksaw Ridge, which was a fantastic movie. I just watched it again the other day, forgot just how good it was. Uh, but what I love the most about Hacksaw Ridge is about the story behind it and about how the story is so ridiculous in real life that they actually had to tone it down for the movie because they felt like it if they put in the movie what actually took place, audiences would find it unbelievable. That's how uh, amazing the story of Desmond Doss is. So we'll talk a little bit about it as we go into it. And hopefully uh, I may learn a few things I didn't know along the way. Because honestly, uh, in studying on De Desmond Doss's life, if you're new to the channel, you're going to find that I talk a lot about how anytime I watch a movie or something, I spend a couple of weeks learning all I can about that topic. And I did that with Desmond Doss. And what I found was that the story of his life after the war is is pretty incredible too. He dealt with a lot of difficulty after the war as a result of his service. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and dive into this and we'll talk through it a little bit here and there. But I'm hoping to learn some things along the way. I invite you to join in as we do that. The medic who fought a war without a weapon. Desmond Doss was not your average hero. He would become a Medal of Honor recipient, the United States of America's highest and most prestigious military award, as a combat medic who saved many of his comrades' lives in battle without firing a single shot, because he didn't take a weapon into combat because of his religious beliefs. Desmond Doss was born in 1919 in the state of Virginia and was raised as a strict Seventh-day Adventist, a Christian denomination that believed that Saturday was the Sabbath and that the second coming of Jesus Christ was imminent. They also believed strongly in nonviolence and a healthy diet based typically on a vegetarian diet. Doss had been raised with a strict belief in the Bible and when it came to the Ten Commandments, he took them to be the core values of how to lead his life. When World War II started, he was conflicted as he believed the war was a just one, but he felt that to kill another human being under any circumstance was wrong. Now, I have my own personal, uh, as a Christian, uh, disagreement with him on the idea of killing. I think the correct interpretation uh, of the Ten Commandments is you shall not murder. Um, but I don't want to get into a religious debate about that. I respect uh, his convictions, and I would not argue with him about those convictions. Those are his convictions, and I support him in that. It's interesting to see a parallel between Desmond Doss, who comes from southwestern Virginia, I think it was southwestern Virginia, uh, and Alvin York, who comes from rural Tennessee, who had, uh, he was from a different Christian denomination, but had similar uh, concerns about how his faith squared with uh, combat and killing people. Uh, Alvin York eventually came to the conclusion it was okay to fight. Uh, Desmond Doss had a different feeling on that, and, and I respect both of them. Uh, another interesting thing with Desmond Doss, Desmond Doss, I think, was in the 307th Infantry, which was part of the 77th Infantry Division, uh, the Liberty Division. Uh, and if you know anything uh, from our talks about World War I, you know the Liberty Division, the 307th, was one of the units that made up what became known as the Lost Battalion. Uh, elements of the 307th uh, were part of that, and the Lost Battalion was all made up of men from the 77th Division. So the Lost Battalion, World War I, Desmond Doss, World War II, same unit. So I thought that was kind of cool. He was already employed as a joiner at Newport News Naval Shipyard, but nevertheless, he joined the United States Army on April 1st, 1942. And what's interesting about that is that as a, a person working in the shipyard, he actually qualified to be exempt from military service because he had a job that was already vital to the war effort. So Desmond Doss could have just kept on working. He wasn't going to be drafted. He had no reason to go and enlist in the Army. 
Uh, but he chose to do that because he had strong convictions about wanting to help out. Uh, and I believe while he was working there, one of the people he worked with was Daryl Shifty Powers, who, if you're familiar with Band of Brothers, uh, you know Shifty from Band of Brothers. Uh, so they worked together, and I think they knew each other quite well. He could have requested a deferment, but he wanted to do his patriotic duty. He was assigned to an infantry unit, the 77th Division, and presumed that his classification as a conscientious objector would not require him to carry a weapon. For Doss, one commandment of the Bible stuck with him the most, thou shalt not kill. He wondered why he was assigned as a rifleman and not in a medical role. His commanding officer tried to pressure Doss into carrying a weapon as they thought he would be more of a liability than an asset in combat, but Doss refused. Interestingly, even for medics, which Doss would later become, it was common practice at the time to carry either an M1911A1 pistol or M1 carbine for self-defense purposes. The rules go that a medic under the Geneva Convention is not forbidden from carrying a weapon, but if a medic fires his weapon, he stops being classed as a medic. Yeah, and, but I believe, and, and I think there's actually, um, you see a scene in uh, the movie Letters from Iwo Jima where you see the Japanese officers instructing their men to actually target the medics because they believed that that would uh, cause such a hit to the morale uh, of the American soldier that it would uh, it would help them win. Therefore, can be legitimately fired upon by the enemy. The regimental chaplain, Captain Stanley, would soon understand Doss's protests and helped him transfer from rifleman to medical training. To make matters worse, his fellow soldiers mocked his religious beliefs. When he was reading the Bible daily and strictly observing the Seventh-day Adventist tradition of attending church every Saturday, Doss continuously requested to be allowed to have Saturdays off, rather than Sundays, in order to follow his Adventist beliefs that Saturday was to be observed as the Sabbath. In the end, Captain Stanley took this up with divisional headquarters, and it was decided that Adventist soldiers would have Saturdays off, just as the other men had Sunday off. Fair. This in fact made Doss even more unpopular than ever with his fellow soldiers, as he was seen to have it easy. As he had Saturdays off, none were on base on Sundays to see him pull extra duties to make up for this. Mm. One of the squad's other soldiers summed up the company's feeling about him and his Saturdays off, complaining, You get more passes than the general. As Doss was a strict vegetarian at a time when it was unusual, it meant that the rest of the unit viewed Doss with such distrust and hostility that one man in his unit even warned him ominously. When we go into combat, Doss, you're not coming back alive. I'm gonna shoot you myself. Jeez. Doss eventually became an army combat medic saying, while others are taking life, I will be saving it. The turning point for Doss and his relationship with his company came with their first 25 mile march with full field pack and rifle, something they were expected to achieve in eight hours. The other soldiers thought Doss would be having it easy as he would be carrying no rifle or ammo that day, but his two canvas medical bags were almost as heavy and much more awkward to carry than any rifle. Huh. As the march progressed, the men started to suffer from exhaustion, numerous blistered feet and dehydration, some even passed out. And all the time there was Doss, always with a helping hand, even to the extent that at the end of the march, he insisted on checking everyone's feet and administering medical aid where it was needed. So you get a glimpse of the man's character here because he's been harassed and we don't know to the extent, you know, it might only been a couple of guys doing this. Maybe most of the men were good to him. I don't know. Uh, but obviously he's been harassed by some of these men. He's been made fun of. He's looked down upon, but he's doing his job anyway. And this is a man of deep conviction who is going to do the right thing regardless of what other people think. And unlike in the movie, uh, there were these incidents where he started to win men over even before they got into combat. And before the the incident in which he, or the series of incidents in which he uh, is given the Medal of Honor because it took place over a couple of weeks, he actually had already gotten a bronze, sto bronze star for valor in a previous battle. By the end of that day, he had won the respect of his entire unit for his tireless devotion to his duty. For the first time, he was treated as one of their own. Doss, as the qualified combat medic of the unit, was now responsible for providing first aid and frontline trauma care on the battlefield. He would be assigned to accompany his unit into the war zone and be there with them on the front line at all times. 
This was soon to happen, for the 77th Division had had their first combat experience on May 11, 1943, and Doss and his comrades were urgently being trained up to replace the combat losses and help expand the division's strength. The 77th Division would end up being in combat officially for no less than 208 days, suffering a total of 9,212 wow. casualties before the war would end. The Battle of Guam Doss's first taste of combat was at the Battle of Guam, which was a bloody battle fought from July 21st to August 10th, 1944, to recapture the U.S. territory of the island of Guam from a determined Japanese garrison of nearly 20,000 troops. Though according to the Geneva Convention, knowingly firing at a medic wearing a clear insignia is a war crime, the Japanese snipers and machine gunners tended to ignore this and saw combat medics as easy and valuable targets to gun down. So medics in the Pacific theater were often told to avoid wearing medical insignia hmm. in case it would make them more, not less, of a target. Isn't that fascinating? Wearing the medical the insignia of a medic is supposed to protect you on the battlefield. In this case, it made them a target. Uh, so, you know, it's just the nature, you know, the level of casualties, at least for the American forces, were far greater in Europe than they were in the Pacific. But the nature of the warfare was very, very different. Uh, it was much more brutal. Uh, it was smaller in terms of the number of men involved, but it was much more intimate. It was much more brutal. Uh, it was a different kind of enemy. It was an enemy that didn't believe in surrender, that he would fight to the last man. Uh, and even the civilians would rather die than surrender and, and lose. Uh, they're dug in into holes. You're in a jungle. Uh, you're landing on beaches. You have Normandy after Normandy after Normandy in terms of the nature of the uh, invasions and the combat that they're dealing with. It's a very, very different kind of war. Doss was under fire nearly every day during the battle and was busy doing his part in saving lives. Guam had shown Doss how cruel war could be. As his unit was pushing forward through the jungle on their first day, a young, fresh-faced recruit spotted a fountain pen laying on the jungle floor and went to pick it up. Mm. Before anyone could warn him otherwise, a white phosphorus grenade exploded. The pen had been booby-trapped. The young man who had picked up the pen, his chest now a bloody mess, had blood pouring out of an open wound. Severe burns and sharp metal fragments covered his body, and he was going into shock. By some miracle, Doss managed to stabilize his condition. Admi the Japanese would actually do this too. When they would abandon a headquarters, for example, and they'd leave behind their tent, with you know maps and different things like that and radios and and the men would come in and they'd go to say oh you know we just you know found all this stuff in the headquarters they'd grab stuff and it would be be, be booby trapped uh pretty quickly they learned this but initially they didn't ministering care and helping to evacuate him and three other soldiers who had been wounded by flying red hot shrapnel this was Doss's first taste of combat casualties the u.s casualties during the battle was truly appalling of the 59,000 U.S. troops who took part in the invasion, around every one in six were either killed or wounded. Hmm. The Battle of Leyte Next, Doss and his unit was involved in the Battle of Leyte in the Philippines that ran from October 17th to December 26th, 1944. A vicious and prolonged battle which started with a huge U.S. coastal bombardment and amphibious landing followed by heavy fighting the more inland the Americans went. During a Japanese counterattack, a fellow medic, Clarence Glenn, had heard the call for a medic from a machine gunner. He left the cover and went into the open, into no man's land, to get the wounded man and was himself hit. Glenn was Doss's friend from back home and he couldn't leave him there. So he and a litter bearer, Herb Schechter, went out to find the two wounded and dealt with them separately. Doss was attending the machine gunner who had a gash along his face while bullets whizzed overhead. Mm. Both of the wounded were alive. They made an improvised litter out of a poncho and tree branches to get the wounded men back to the aid station. But his friend Glenn would die before he made it. Mm. From this point on, Doss would not look at the face of the men he was treating in case it was another friend. Wow. So you know, that gives you a little bit of a glimpse into the psyche that you're dealing with. You know, a man can only take so much. You start losing friends. You start it starts becoming personal. You can't do your job. Uh, and another thing that they you know mentioned there about how imp imp improvising using branches and things like that that's something Doss did, and I'm sure a lot of medics did was they would use whatever was available. You know, grab uh, the butt of a rifle and turn it into a 
uh, turn it into a splint, uh, wrap up a blanket and use it to pull. You know, whatever you had to do, whatever you could find uh, to use to get these men out of harm's way and get them to care. Sadly, his friend Herb would be shot and killed when he and Doss were carrying a litter as their silhouette exposed them against Ugh. the sky to the enemy. On top of losing his friends, Doss was constantly hungry because the meat in the K rations conflicted with his vegetarianism, mm. so he could only eat the tasteless crackers and coconuts he found. On Lady, the coconuts on the ground gave him diarrhea, so he climbed the trees for fresh ones. At one point, Doss was looking for coconuts. It attracted poorly aimed Japanese machine oh, gun boy. fire. When they were killed by American soldiers, it was later discovered that they had been drunk on sake. <laughs> One thing that shocked Doss during the most devastating times of the campaign was that the same man who had made threats towards him during training at Fort Jackson now came to him for guidance and to pray for him. Interesting. See, that's an important thing to note there. Uh, as a Christian myself, and, and it's fine if you're not, I, I don't talk about my faith much. I don't want to alienate the audience if you believe differently than I do. Um, but... Uh, whatever your convictions are, when you stick to those things and you show that you really do believe it, uh, it will draw people to that. You know, um, I've always believed that as a Christian, that if I am authentic in my faith and I stick to it and I'm not a hypocrite uh, and I acknowledge that I'm not perfect, but I'm working on it. Uh, that hopefully that's going to draw people to what I have and what I believe, uh, whatever that might be. And for Doss, you know, by, by sticking to what he believed in, but also showing that he was an honorable guy that was going to give his very best to the unit, he earned the respect and admiration and even uh, the desire from his commanding officer seeking his advice like that. And I think that's awesome. The Battle of Okinawa. And lastly, for Doss and the 77th Infantry Division, was a battle that was to be the bloodiest battle of the war in the and Pacific, this is as well as its largest amphibious landing. The U.S. objective was to secure the island as a base, as it was just 350 miles south of the Japanese mainland, and would be strategically crucial for any future invasion of Japan. The battle started on April 1, 1945, exactly three years to the day that Doss first enlisted in the army, and the battle was to last 81 days. Mm. Doss was assigned to the 1st Battalion as their combat medic. On April 29, 1945, the 77th Division was given the task of assaulting on a 400-foot-high cliff called the Maida Escarpment. This was nicknamed by the Americans as Hacksaw Ridge. Before they climbed the cargo net, Doss said a prayer for his comrades. When Doss's unit joined the assault, and as they neared the top of the escarpment, they came under intense Japanese artillery small arms and machine gun fire and this is going to be the battle where and i'm sure he'll get into the details of this it's absolutely ludicrous what desmond doss did during the battle of hacksaw ridge just unbelievable like i said mel gibson in making the movie toned it down because he didn't think people would actually believe that what desmond doss did really happened inflicting severe casualties on the assaulting american troops the American forces had sent in wave after wave of troops to try to dislodge a fanatical enemy base there who were well entrenched and camouflaged. On May 4th, while his unit was attacking a heavily fortified enemy position at the mouth of a cave, Doss went to the aid of four of his injured comrades. The lieutenant who led the attack on the emplacement had intended to throw a grenade when an enemy bullet hit him and delayed it, blowing his hand off and wounding his comrades. Despite having to get within 25 feet of the enemy lines and under attack by enemy grenades and gunfire, Doss managed to get to the injured men. He then managed to evacuate the men back to his own lines, one by one. During the night, the Japanese continued to throw grenades and kept up the mortar fire. The American soldiers hid in rock crevices, but the Japanese found ways to infiltrate and sneak up on them. Hmm. Then on the next day, May 5th, he came to the rescue of a wounded artillery officer who had gone to see how the artillery guns were doing. Doss's left leg was now injured as he had fell the day before down the edge of a parapet. He climbed up the cargo net with his first aid kits, his weight falling on his bad leg. Finding him in a shell hole, the officer had been struck by shrapnel that had made a hole from his chest to his back. And Doss could hear him breathing through it. He wow. was bleeding heavily. Doss gave him first aid while under constant enemy gunfire and shelling. He put the dressings over the large holes in the colonel's chest and back, 
and administered blood plasma which dangerously exposed Doss to the enemy as he had to hold it up high. Yeah. Doss's efforts here would be in vain as the colonel carried back on a stretcher died before he reached the aid station. Later, there were orders to take a vital Japanese pillbox position on the reverse slope of a hill that was holding up the American advance. Desmond Doss, once he had read his prayers, was happy to support the assault. The American troops threw gasoline cans at the position, which triggered a large explosion. Mm. All of a sudden, a large Japanese counterattack overwhelmed the American soldiers, causing them to panic and rush back to the edge of the cliff. But despite this, Doss refused to take cover and yep. were constantly under heavy fire by the enemy. Though being totally exhausted, he spent hours carrying the wounded one by one to the edge of the escarpment. And he would later on say, uh, I was watching an interview with Desmond Doss, and he said the whole time, he said, I just kept praying, Lord, help me get one more. And he said, when I got that one, I'd say, okay, Lord, help me get one more. I think he ended up saving 75 men that day. Uh, most of the men with weapons had retreated back down over the side of the cliff. And he's up there doing this. It's just incredible. Then, to get the more severely wounded down, he tied a rope to a tree stump and lowered them down the cliff on a rope-supported stretcher to safety. I think he ended up getting burns on his hands. When kept slipping, he turned to a new method, looping the rope around the wounded men's chest and legs to lower them down. Doss, standing, exposed to potential enemy fire, was seen praying at the cliff edge as the men were being lowered down. And later, he had said he had been praying to the Lord to help him get one more. And after that, one more, until they were all down. <laughs> Calculating the wounded men at the base of the cliff, the captain worked out that Doss had saved around 75 men. The Americans would eventually go back up the cliff and on May 7th would take the position. Ridiculous. Absolutely By some ridiculous. Miracle, Doss survived the whole battle totally unhurt, but that was soon to change. On May 21st, in the confusion of a night attack, Doss tended to the American wounded, risking being hit by both the Japanese and by friendly fire. Doss was in a shell hole with another American soldier when a grenade landed beneath him. His reflex action was to put his foot on it and was seriously wounded in both legs as blood poured out from the impact of 17 pieces of shrapnel in his body. Mm. But he remained in his position for five hours, tending to himself while also helping others who were Still wounded. Still helping until others. Until a medic and a pair of litter bearers could get to him. But that was not the end of it that day. For as he was being stretchered to safety, they got caught in an enemy tank attack. As they took cover, Doss spotted a critically injured man and insisted that he be taken back on the stretcher instead of himself. While Doss waited for the litter bearers to return, he was found and helped back by a fellow soldier. Suddenly, Doss was hit by a Japanese sniper's bullet and suffered a compound fracture to his arm. The two men took cover in a shell hole. Realizing how badly injured he now was, Doss instructed the soldier on how to bind his rifle stock to his shattered arm yep. to act as a splint. Eventually pushing through excruciating pain, he would make it back to the aid station. The U.S. Army recognized Doss's extreme bravery, and he was awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor for his heroic and selfless actions at Okinawa from April 29th to May 21st, 1945. And there's, uh, there's actually video and photos of President Truman presenting Desmond Doss with his Medal of Honor. Because of his heroic actions, many wounded men made it back home. Desmond Doss would go on to run a small family farm with his wife, Dorothy, and lived to the age of 87. So let's talk, uh, I don't know if they're going to say much more, talk a little bit about Desmond Doss after the war. He actually spent five years in treatment after the war because of uh, his wounds. Had to have one of his lungs removed, uh, I think several ribs as well. Uh, eventually was given a 90% disability. Uh, and then uh, during continued treatment, I think some of the medication caused a problem and actually he went deaf uh, from the treatment. Uh, eventually, I think late in his life, he got cochlear implants and was able to get some of his hearing back, but he spent the better part of a decade completely deaf. And all of that went back to what he did during the war. Uh, he, got, he was driving one day uh, later in life and got in a car accident. His wife died uh, from that accident. He remarried again. But just there's so much uh, incredible about his story, even after the war, the things that he overcame, the things that he dealt with, uh, the things that he had had to face all going back to his heroism 
from the Second World War. So I guess that's it uh, to that story. One of my absolute favorite stories. I have such incredible respect for uh, men like Desmond Doss, who even though he was a conscientious objector, even though he did not have to serve, he had a reason not to. Uh, and he had the ability not to with the job that he had, still chose to, still wanted to do his part, didn't make his faith an excuse for not doing something. And I, I have incredible respect for that and for his bravery uh, and for others that are like him. So let me know your thoughts. Use the comment section below. Would love to hear your thoughts. Uh, what have you learned about Desmond Doss? What are your thoughts about everything we just talked about? Uh, if you want to consider being a, a patron, uh, please check out the link in the description below for that. Uh, and you can vote on what our next series is going to be. We'll probably decide that in the next day or two. Thanks for watching.